Welcome to virtual worship with Wayman African Methodist Episcopal Church on this first Sunday of December, second Sunday of Advent. Hallelujah, glory to God. Welcome, welcome to Wayman African Methodist Episcopal Church virtual worship. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before God with joyful songs. Our general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men and women, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy unto us, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
man, the blood will never lose its power. Let us bow in prayer. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, our King and Savior. Lord, we love you today. You sing and you dance with us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are the Advent. Your throne, O oh God, will last forever and ever. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. The Lord has anointed Jesus with the oil of joy. You never change, Lord. You are always the same. You sit at the right hand of our fathers. Your enemies are a footstool for your feet. You are everything for our church. You are the body, the blood, love, peace, joy, compassion, steadfast, and our strong tower. You give us wisdom and revelation so we know you all the better. Thank you, Jesus for keeping us safe, for having your way in this service today. We give all praise and glory and honor to you. We thank you, Lord, for everyone. Lord, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for all of the families, Lord. May your anointing be in every song and every prayer in your mighty word and in every heart. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' most amazing name, amen. Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13. I listen carefully to what God the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to his faithful people. But let them not return to their foolish ways. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. So our land will be filled with his glory. Unfailing love and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the earth and righteousness smiles down from the heaven. Yes, the Lord pours down his blessings. Our land will yield its bountiful harvest. Righteousness goes as a herald before him preparing the way for his steps. The gospel according to Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the wet road for him. This messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you uh, pick up your uh, communion, uh, your bread and your wine, and let I'm going to consecrate it, and then we will take it all together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious blood until his coming again. 
Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And when he had given thanks, he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, drink all of it. Therefore, this is the blood of my New Testament, which is shed for you and for the many, for the remission of sins. And often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. You may not take the bread. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, which was broken for you. Take and eat. This is the blood of our Lord and Savior, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Let us say the Reverend Lindetta, before you do uh, the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. you uh, hum or sing or say a verse of, uh, I know it was the blood. 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 For me, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. Let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Uh, we ask that you would continue to be generous in your giving. Uh, you can give through, by mailing in your uh, offering and tithe. Uh, you can give through app, the app Givelify, or you can give via the website, wayman amec Dot com. I ask that you please stay safe during these holy days. I know you want to meet and greet, but please stay, stay, stay safe. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we look to the hills from whence cometh our help, because all of our help comes from you. You are our refuge, our strong tower, and we thank you. We praise you, we honor, and we glorify you. You are mighty and magnificent. And God, we ask blessings upon your people, blessings as they meet and greet, blessings during this holy season. God, we ask that if, because it's such a strange season, strange how we have to uh, greet and social distance, God, we just ask that you would protect your people that they would uh, be able to uh, communicate with loved ones, but they would be protected from any hurt, harm, or danger. God, we ask that you would bless our children, bless those that teach them, and bless them that they would learn. God, we ask that you would go by the nursing homes. We ask that you would go by the hospitals and you would uh, heal those that are in the nursing homes and hospitals. God, we ask that you would protect those in the nursing home. As the numbers rise, God, we ask that you would be our protection. 
Um, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we give you honor, and we give you glory this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly singing all the plain, and the mountain in reply echoes back their joyous strain. Glory, oh, oh, yeah. in excelsis Deo, glory, oh, 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 yeah. in excelsis Deo. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? Say what may the tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? Glory, oh. Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, come to Bethlehem. Ham and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knees, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Glory, oh, oh, yeah. In excelsis Deo, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, see within a manger lay, Jesus, Lord of heaven and earth. Mary, Joseph, leave your aid with us, sing your Savior's birth. Glory in excelsis Deo. Glory. Oh, we are in excelsis day. Praise the Lord. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11, the New International Version. Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain, and heal made low. 
The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass and their and all their faithfulness is like flowers in the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on, high, on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid, says the, say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He leads gently those that have young. This is the second Sunday of the Christian season of Advent, a time of waiting and preparing for our coming Savior. The year 2020 has been fraught with much loss, changes, grief, and turmoil. During this season of Advent, we wait with much anticipation the coming of peace and justice brought by our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is full of mercy and grace and will bring us through this difficult year. As a nation and as a people, we have been living in spiritual, in a spiritual wilderness. When we hear the word wilderness, we may think of wild, uninhabited, wild animals, non-urbanized, a natural environment, weeds, and uncultivated woods or forest, and a place without protection. Now, if you are a hiker or a camper or a naturalist, it is a place undisturbed by human activity, and it probably doesn't sound like a bad place to visit. Sometimes when I think of wilderness, I think of pristine waters to fish and unpolluted territory. Similarly, a spiritual wilderness may be characterized as a place where God seems distant and far away. A place without shade and protection, dry spaces, water is scarce, no green vegetation, feelings of being alone, vulnerable, and lost. Many would say it is a place of distress, doubt, and alienation from God. It can be a place where you may experience chaos and confusion and your faith is fearful. It may be that place where you ask, where is God? But let me suggest to you this morning that spiritual wilderness for believers is a place where your faith is tried and tested to build endurance, perseverance, and a stronger faith. All Christians will experience spiritual wilderness. Regardless of how righteous, how strong a disciple you are, and how rock steady your faith is. The fathers and mothers of the Christian faith all experience spiritual wildernesses. The book of, of Hebrews chapter 11 lists the hall of fame of biblical faith, and they all experience spiritual wilderness. Now, some of you may want to argue that Enoch did not experience spiritual wilderness. And I say to you, he did not live on earth for 365 years and not experience spiritual wilderness. 
You can become a member of the Hall of Fame of Biblical Faith by surviving and thriving because of your wilderness. The wilderness strengthens your faith and trust in God. They went through trials, trouble, and turmoil and came out stronger. The wilderness helps us to know that we can rely on God, that God is near as a call. So why did I say that as a nation and as a people, we have been living in a spiritual wilderness? For at least the last four years, we have come to know that leadership could not be trusted for justice. The racial harmony was an illusion that righteousness depended upon our relationship with God, that our hope is truly built on Jesus' blood and righteousness, that our sins have truly been forgiven and we have been separated from God because of our sins, that we were being tested and that our faith required developing a relationship with God. Prayer connected us to the source of our power and strength and that the firm foundation is based upon belief in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We've been in a spiritual wilderness, and we've learned some things. Let's see what our text can teach us about God and spiritual wilderness. The prophet Isaiah prophesied to the people of Judah during turbulent times. He prophesied under at least four different kings. Two bad kings and two good kings. King Jotham and King Hezekiah were the good kings of Judah. And King Ahaz and King Manasseh were the bad kings that the prophet Isaiah served under. The good kings moved the people towards serving and obeying God. And the bad kings moved the people away from serving and worshiping God. Isaiah wanted the people to look beyond their current tragedy to the restoration of their vital faith community. The people, the people of Judah were experiencing chaos and confusion. The physical and central space of their faith, the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed. They were in exile in a strange land. Isaiah constantly tried to get the kingdom of Judah, to honor their covenant with God, God who was committed to compassionate justice and protecting the vulnerable. Our text, Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11, paints a picture of what a reconciled and restored community to God will look like. The people of Judah were characterized as representatives of God's salvation. The restoration and deliverance of Judah would be solely by the hand of God. It would be God alone who would work salvation and justice in the land. After Judah repented of its sin and turned to God, God always stands with his arms open wide, ready to restore, deliver, and receive repentant sinners. The prophet Isaiah opens our text with comfort, comfort my people. He was showing compassion and speaking tenderly to the heart of the people to ease their grief and distress. Isaiah was not offering pious platitudes and empty encouragement. The people would have to go through the trials and troubles of 70 years of Babylonian captivity. Their time of trial was almost over. Their years of hard service of time of warfare was coming to an end. Sometimes when we are going through, words of comfort will console you. Knowing that an end to your trouble is coming soon will help you through. Knowing that God is with you and able to carry you through if the load gets too heavy and rough. Yes, we go through. Through is a preposition indicating movement in one side and out the other, continuing toward completion. We go through Death Valley. We go through grief. The people were going through captivity, loss, grief, 
loss of land, a faith crisis, but there is an end in sight. The debt of their sins had been covered, not that they had overpaid, but the debt of their sins had been paid in full. In this wilderness, there is one calling out, prepare the way for the Lord. Even though we may think of the wilderness of a, as a place where we are alone, we are not alone. And if we do not harden our heart, we will hear the voice calling out, comforting, guiding, and in instructing us to the other side. The people of Judah experienced troubles and captivity because of their sin and not serving and worshiping God. They went through these trials because they had turned from God Almighty to other gods. God is all about comforting, pardoning, and restoring a broken world. Deliverance and restoration are on the way. God's blessings are going to be poured out on the people if they turn to God. The Mosaic Covenant says that when we live according to God's word, we are blessed. When we disobey, we will be cursed and even cast out of the land. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, it spells out the blessings and the cursing that the people of God will encounter. Uh, um, for some of you all, Fred Hammond memorialized it in, we're blessed in the city. We're blessed when we go out. We're blessed when we come in. Hallelujah. The cursing of Judah was about to come to an end. The cursing that was upon them because they did not serve and worship the Lord was about to come to an end. This, this era of shame and guilt and loss is coming to an end. Let me say that again. This era of loss and shame and guilt is coming to an end. People of Judah, prepare your hearts for life after captivity. For life after loss, for life after Babylonian exile, for life after the wilderness journey. People of Judah, prepare yourself for life after this particular trouble. Get ready for the next leg of the journey. People, get ready for life after COVID-19, life after immoral and inept leadership. People, get ready for life after fake news, lies, and deception. People get ready for a return to compassionate and just leadership. But remember, leaders are human and will make mistakes. So our hope is in a loving and a compassionate God who made the heavens and the earth. Our peace, Judah's peace, comes from a restored relationship with God. Get ready because deliverance and restoration is on the way. People, people, prepare yourselves to serve the Lord wholeheartedly with joy and graciousness. The wilderness strengthens our faith in a loving and a just God. Make straight in the desert a highway for God. Turn your heart to God. Roll out the red carpet because our king is coming. The valleys will be raised and the mountains will be lowered and the rough ground and the rugged places will be, will be leveled. Even the potholes in your life will be filled in. The glory, the Shekinah glory will be revealed and we shall see it for God has spoken. Our faith is inconsistent. Many serve and love God when things are going good. Ah, oh, but the wilderness, this wilderness that they were going through, the wilderness of our lives teaches us to hold to God's unchanging hand. Uh, uh, the world consists of fickle, fickle, fuzz, fussy people. Yeah. But above this world, it is a faithful God who fulfills his word. Let me say that again. The world consists of fickle, fussy people. But above this world is a faithful God who fulfills his word. People are like grass and flowers that spring up and fall. But God's word endures forever. 
God speaks to the prophets and the priests and tells them to say to the people, look at verses 9 through 11. He says, you who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up and do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. And verse 11, it says that he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. People of God, shout out loud. Here is our God. God is coming. God is coming and will restore Judah from exile and repair the harm. He is coming to rule with power and bestow blessings. He is coming. He is the king of glory, strong and mighty, strong in battle. He is coming to release, to redeem, and to restore the broken world of Judah. God sent his all-powerful son to restore and redeem our broken world. Our God, King Jesus, is coming. In Isaiah chapter 11, verses 2 through 5, he describes King Jesus as the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness a sash around his way. King Jesus is the kind and loving shepherd who will care for his sheep. King Jesus is the kind and loving shepherd who will care for us. His rod and his staff will comfort us. God knew that we all would experience spiritual wilderness and we would need a savior. God knew that we would mess up, get ourselves in trouble and would experience loss and grief. So God sent his son Jesus and the comforter, the Holy Spirit to help us through this terrain of life. In the season, in this season of Advent, we wait our coming Savior. We are waiting on peace and justice, which Jesus brings to the world. We are waiting for deliverance and restoration from our spiritual wilderness experiences. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah, angels. We have heard on high, sweetly singing over the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? Say what may the tidings be which inspire your heavenly song. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth, hallelujah, the angels sing. Come, adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. See within a manger lay Jesus, Lord of heaven and earth. Mary, Joseph, lend your aid with us, sing our Savior's birth. Glory in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. He doesn't leave us in our spiritual wilderness. He sends help and your help is on the way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you don't know this Jesus Christ, I invite you this morning to invite him into your heart. Invite him into your life. Yeah, life can be rough, but with Jesus, you can make it through. Hallelujah. You can make it from this side to the next side. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
The doors of the church are open. Bless the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May his countenance restore and redeem you. May you be delivered from your spiritual wilderness. May God be with you as you go through this season of life. Amen and amen.